Hello, welcome to our presentation. My name is Sean Smith. I'm a product manager with Oracle, and I'm going to talk to you today about the Oracle Coherence 12.1.2 hot cache feature for integrating Golden Gate with Oracle Coherence. First, uh, just a standard disclaimer that you shouldn't be making any buying uh, decisions based on the material in this presentation, and that, uh, of course, plans uh, may change in the future. So in terms of context, uh, we're talking about a, a component of the uh, Cloud Application Foundation, which of course is Coherence, and more specifically, a piece of Coherence called the uh, Hot Cache feature, uh, which integrates, as I mentioned, uh, Oracle Golden Gate with Oracle Coherence. So our agenda today is to look at the challenge faced by developers who are sharing a database between Coherence applications and other third-party applications you may have in your in your enterprise. Uh, then I'll introduce the, the Golden Gate Hot Cache feature, explain uh, what it does. We'll take a look at the various products that are integrated uh, by the Hot Cache feature, the things that uh, make up the functionality that we're, we're going to see. And then I'll give you a demo, and uh, then we'll summarize it. So the database challenge, the shared database challenge. Here's an ideal uh, database-backed ap coherence application scenario, right? I have Oracle Coherence application uh, interacting through uh, the database through cache stores and cache loaders. So as data is modified in coherence, it's either written synchronously or asynchronously to the backing database. Uh, when, a, when a cache get uh, on coherence has a miss, then it'll go to the cache store and it will load the data from the database to bring in the, the latest version of that data. Uh, and this works great if Coherence is the only application interacting with that database. So all the changes that are being applied to that database are coming through the Coherence application itself. However, it's not ideal when you have other applications that are reading and writing data uh, in that database because you may have data in Coherence that's cached uh, that is being changed on disk by third-party apps. So you have a situation which can arise that your coherence applications or your coherence cache uh, could be stale. And so uh, what can we do? Well, today there are some solutions. Um, you can use cache expiry to expire data out of the cache after a given point in time so that uh, when data is expired and you go to get it from coherence, of course, you'll do a read through and it'll pull the data from the database uh, into coherence fresh. Uh, that's great, except that it's somewhat inefficient in that you are probably going to be expiring a lot of perfectly fresh data. So uh, if you have a thousand records and one of them happens to be changed on disk, um, if you're using cache expire, you're going to eventually expire all thousand records in coherence. It's not great, very efficient, uh, but it does. It, it can be useful and it can work in certain scenarios. Uh, your other choice is refresh ahead, uh, where coherence uh, refreshes data uh, in a rolling manner from the database to keep the caches up to date. And again, the, the problem there is, again, latency uh, and inefficiency. So you're probably reloading a lot of data that's perfectly fresh once again. And it could take a while for you to get back to um, the same piece of data uh, in a sweep. So you may have a fair bit of latency between an initial read uh, and the second read uh, to pick up any possible changes. So our solution, of course, would be if we could have some uh, way to get the changes from the database uh, into coherence, you know, and, and ideally, of course, that would be event driven. So as it happens, we'd like it to be fast, of course, so that we have as little latency as possible between database changes and coherence seeing the change. And we'd like it to be as efficient as possible, so keeping the CPU load. Uh, the real challenge here is understanding what objects in the coherence cache to update when the database data is changed. And that's kind of a missing piece here. And so what we're looking for is something that when the third party application does an update, that we can pump that change right up into coherence as fast and efficiently as possible, somehow knowing what a database change means to the coherence cache. So the solution we have uh, in this new feature in Coherence 12.2 is the Golden Gate Hot Cache. Uh, this is a piece of code that uh, has been built on Oracle Toplink, uh, and it integrates Oracle Golden Gate, Go Golden Gate with coherence um, to, to effectively pump these changes up. So we have basically have a data pump. And what happens is as data is changed, 
by third parties. Golden Gate detects those changes and passes those changes on to the, uh, the Golden Gate hot cache. And the hot cache um, feature will take the database change uh, using Oracle Top Link, it will determine what objects those changes ap apply to, and it will push those changes into coherence. Uh, and it's going to do that uh, using the uh, the mapping is done, I should say, using the uh, Java Persistence API uh, Java standard mapping mechanism. So we'll map objects to to tables, and we will understand how to go from table changes to object changes. Uh, this does not require any changes to the coherence application. Uh, you can use this uh, technique with existing coherence apps that um, uh, you have deployed. Uh, this is an efficient model because Co Golden Gate tracks changes as they occur. So uh, as changes happen, they're pushed into uh, coherence. And Co Golden Gate um, can be configured for low latency. So it's used frequently to um, run hot-hot between two databases and other kinds of uh, high uh, high performance production environments, so it's certainly up to the task of keeping coherence up to date. Let's take a look at the products that comprise our hot cache solution. First, we have Oracle Golden Gate, which is a change data capture uh, product that captures changes from a source uh, database and uh, can transmit them to a target database. At least, this is uh, what the most common usage is. Uh, Golden Gate monitors the transaction logs or the redo logs of the source database uh, and places all the transaction records into what they call a trail file. Uh, that trail file is typically pumped across the LAN uh, or WAN to another location where that trail file is consumed and the changes are applied to a target database. And you can run this uh, mechanism uh, bidirectionally even so you can keep hot hot uh, across, across different uh, sites. Golden Gate uh, offers a, a component called Golden Gate for Java, which allows you to uh, consume the trail file, those, those changes, uh, and have them delivered to a Java application uh, for processing. Uh, originally, this was built for JMS, so they would be able to capture database changes and, and then pump them into a JMS queue and send them wherever. Um, but that solution was generalized to allow for uh, Java callback handlers or you know, event handlers. And is this mechanism that we're leveraging in uh, Hotcache? So what we've done is we've built a custom uh, Java adapter uh, that is able to process the changes coming from Golden Gate, coming from the source database through Golden Gate, um, and we were able to take those change records and translate them into um, updates to the coherence cache. The second product in our uh, integration is Oracle Toplink. Now, Toplink is a Java persistent solution that's most commonly known as an object, object relational mapping framework. It includes a Java uh, architecture for XML binding implementation and support for database web services for bending out relational data over web services. Uh, it's got very strong developer support as it's developed uh, mostly in open source uh, at the Eclipse Foundation as part of the Eclipse Link project. And there's quite a bit of tool support in the various popular IDEs um, including Oracle Enterprise Pack for Eclipse from Oracle, uh, NetBeans, and JDeveloper. The key feature, one of the key features of Toplink is performance. It's a key piece of Oracle's SpecJ result. So the SpecJ uh, benchmark is a benchmark for, or for application servers, and a large part of that is actually database access. And so Toplink plays a large role in producing a very good number uh, for Oracle WebLogic Server. And uh, with WebLogic setting some world records, we know that Toplink has played a significant role in that. And of course, um, that's sort of a reflection of the focus we have on performance. So we do have some very good performance there, and it's uh, why it's a good fit with Golden Gate and coherence for building high performance systems. So let's look at how this actually works a little bit more in detail. So the key feature I mentioned that was missing, the missing, missing link as it were, is the connection between the database change and the coherence cache objects that are affected by that change. And what we're doing is we're using the Java Persistence API uh, mapping metadata uh, to, let it to, to describe how a p classes in the cache are associated with uh, database rows, columns, uh, etc. So we see here a standard um, JPA mapping. We have two different forms, which are isomorphic. Uh, same thing in the two different forms. One is using Java annotations. One is using XML mappings. 
And you'll see here that in both cases, we have a class called employee. It has a uh, ID or a primary key is identified by the ID field in the database. And it's got first name, last name, and salary. Now, what's interesting with JPA is quite a lot of things are defaulted. You'll notice on uh, both sides of this, uh, this examples, there's no physical storage described here. Uh, that's because JPA defaults, uh, has intelligent defaults. So there's an implicit uh, mapping of employee to employee table using the same name, and the column names are mapped to the fields of the same name. Uh, if there's a difference between the uh, Java classes and the database, the physical database structures, then uh, there are annotations in XML to um, override and basically provide specific mapping, so column names specifically or table names, etc. So we're using this information to connect uh, J the Java app classes to the database. And unlike standard ORM, where you're primarily focused on writing objects and reading objects to a database, uh, in this case, we've kind of turned it upside down. What we're doing is we're actually starting with database changes coming from Golden Gate. And we're saying, given this change, um, which object, uh, how do I map that to the object? So we're kind of running ORM uh, backwards, uh, in, in a sense, or JPA backwards. So as I said, with this information, this metadata, we can uh, figure out which class is affected by any given table change. So we'll know the class for associated with a table. Uh, we will know the primary key so that when we get a row from Golden Gate uh, telling us the key uh, or the ID of the object that effect is affected, we will now know the key in co coherence that that object is cached under. And again, columns and fields, well, we, can, we can get the information for mapping uh, between column changes and the affected fields. And uh, we also have a scenario with um, uh, when using Toplink Grid, and I won't go into that today, but when using Toplink Grid, which is co caching and coherence uh, when using a JPA application, kind of a, a little bit of a variant of what we've got today, we actually have information to let us update relationships too. But that's actually a, a different use case. So with hot cache, uh, we are able to figure out what objects in the cache need to be updated given with a given database change. We use coherence ng processors to update the data in place. We do not pull the data from the cache uh, into the hot cache feature, you know, component, uh, modify it and put it back. We actually send entry processors that update the appropriate objects and only the appropriate fields based on the database uh, changes. Uh, we do have support for optimistic locking. So if we have a indicator of what the optimistic lock field is, we can ensure that only uh, new changes are applied to coherence. So there are scenarios in which you may receive uh, old changes uh, due to latency. Um, you could have frequent changes going on in coherence and a change coming slowly from the database for whatever reason. Uh, we will not apply an old change. We will not overwrite um, new data with old data, uh, thanks to optimistic locking. We do have a configurable error handling policy so that if, for example, uh, a change is received for um, an object in cache and that object in cache is much older than we expect it to be, we can invoke the error handling policy, which by default uh, would do a refresh. It will actually read the fresh data from database so that your cache is up to date. So there's a nice uh, configurable error handling policy that you can configure um, to operate as you, as you wish. Okay, so let's have a look at a demo of the hot cache. So what we're going to do here is look at a very simple application. I made it as simple as possible um, so that we could sort of see what's going on and uh, unadorned without too much distraction. So I've got a coherence application. It interacts with coherence uh, cluster. It's a cl cluster client. Um, it's interacting with simple gets and puts to the employee cache. Uh, we're going to see coherence uh, take those objects and pass them to a cache store and do insert, update, delete as necessary based on the operations I perform in the client. So it's a very simple uh, application with a very simple data model, in this case, one object. Then we're going to take a look at interacting with that same database through SQL Plus. And again, SQL Plus because um, you can't get any more raw than just raw SQL. Uh, interaction with the database. So we're going to do things like uh, delete data, uh, modify data. Uh, we could even insert data. We're going to see those changes flow from the database to Golden Gate, which is going to produce an extract. We're going to take those extracted records, uh, change records, and the Golden Gate hot cache is going to consume them and transform them into the appropriate object-oriented operations, whether that's be an insert or a modification. 
of an object and it'll apply it to the coherence cache and then the client will see those changes. Uh, so we have a full data flow from raw SQL client through into the coherence cache. And uh, I've also set up uh, observable map listeners on the employee cache in this example so that the client uh, has an event log and will see changes uh, propagate from database directly into the coherence client application. So here we are in my test environment, my demo environment, and I've got a number of windows here, uh, each of which correspond to that diagram we were looking at a moment ago with the sort of U-shaped flow. So in the upper left-hand corner, I've got a SQL plus client uh, where I'm just going to directly execute some SQL. I've got the Golden Gate Extract Console, so that's the process of monitoring the database and um, capturing changes, writing them to a trail file. Here I have the Hot Cache Console, which is the console for the process that's consuming that trail file, and then we'll be applying changes to the coherence cache. Here I have the cache server console, uh, so the standalone cache server here that this client uh, above that is connected to, and there's a cache store configured uh, behind the employee cache, so as changes we make in the client will be written to the database. So let's just see that first. So I'm going to create some data here. Uh, John Doe, put him in the cache and we see a corresponding insert into the cache. I think I'll create another object here, another employee. Uh, we'll make it Jane. We'll put Jane in there also. And we've seen Jane Doe's being inserted. So looking at the database directly here, we can see what's in there. And it won't be a surprise, of course. And we see we have Jane and John Doe in the database. So what things get more interesting is if we make some changes. So let me first start off by modifying uh, one of the database uh, employee records. So I'm going to update uh, name equals to uh, Joe, where the ID is 1. And when I commit that, we're going to see some activity. So the lower left-hand corner, we're going to see the uh, extract console um, some movement there, some movement in the hot cache console, and then nothing in the cache server since really it's not doing anything. Uh, but we do have an observable map listener set up in the client on the employee cache, so we will see the change applied to John uh, reflected in the UI. In fact, just to make things a bit more interesting here, uh, actually I'll go and we'll go and fetch uh, John Doe from the, from the cache, and let's apply this commit now. See the change take place, see a bit of flickering here, uh, a little bit of activity, and we see the change reflected in the coherence client. In fact, the uh, field's updated to the new name, Joe Doe. So that's quite nice. So we, updates can flow through. Uh, we can do things like uh, delete objects, in fact, or uh, records, I guess, in this case. Oops, let's get the syntax right here. And if I do a commit, we see that that removal from the cache, uh, removal from the database, and the commit of that remove uh, propagates into the cache. It's gone, and my client can see that delete event occur. Uh, one more thing we can do here, uh, besides updates and deletes, of course, we can do an insert. And so I can uh, insert into employee table. put in uh, Tom Jones here to commit and we're going to see that uh, new data uh, appear in the coherence cache so these events we're seeing in, in the client the observable map events are letting us see that the data has made it into into the cache so we have the very latest data available to us in coherence as I'm doing direct interaction with the database and you can imagine this is the case when that third party is not just, you know, someone sitting at a console. Uh, although that's sometimes, you know, DBAs do hammer data. Uh, we can we can live with that. Uh, but most typically, of course, it'll be third party applications. Okay. Well, now that we've seen the demo run, let's take a look at how the hot cache is working. Like, what is what is it that allows us uh, us to get the changes propagated? Well, it's fairly straightforward. Here's an example 
So I have a steady state example where I have the cache matching the database. I've got employee one, uh, Bob here, who's got a, a salary of 100,000. And when a change is made, so I do a direct SQL change or a third party application makes a database change to say the salary here, Golden Gate tracks that change, captures that change, and can provide to hot cache a before and after view of that data. In this case, it's very minimal. It's just the change column along with the primary key, which we of course will use to identify uh, the object in the cache. Now, given the mapping information that we have in JPA, and here's the uh, XML version of that, We've seen this earlier on. I have an employee class. Its ID is going to be in the column ID. So with this information, I know that since the employee table has changed, I'm dealing with the employee class. And I know that the ID column in that change record will correspond to the primary key of the object uh, that's stored in coherence. It's, key, it's keyed under. So given that we know that before the, the ID of the object, which is one, we can go look up employee one in the cache uh, using uh, the information we have at hand. I then can take the, or the hot cache can take the changed value, the new value, which is to salary, and apply that change to the salary object, a uh, salary field in the employee object in the cache, so it now matches database. So it's actually fairly straightforward. The sort of the uh, linkage between database and cache is, is not you know, black magic. It's a pretty straightforward transformation here. What we're doing in the hot cache is making it easy and declarative to be able to make that connection using JPA mapping metadata. Well, this brings us to the end of our presentation today. I hope that we have piqued your interest in the Coherence Golden Gate hot cache uh, feature. Uh, as we saw, it can propagate changes from database to coherence, and it's using Oracle Golden Gate for the database uh, change capture, and it is feeding those changes through a new feature, the hot cache feature, which is using top link inside to map those changes to the associated cached objects. Uh, this is a new feature available in Coherence 12.1.2, and I hope you will check it out. Uh, one more thing, uh, we do have a very active community in, the, in Coherence, and so I encourage you to get involved. We have Twitter uh, account you can follow, we have Facebook page, we have uh, ongoing blogs, and there's quite a number of article uh, videos on uh, YouTube which you can uh, check out. So thank you very much. My name is Sean Smith, and I hope you enjoyed our presentation.